Hello and welcome back everybody. This is our video solutions for quiz four. This is in the spring 2023 semester, Math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. And uh, our first problem is about using the division algorithm. So uh, the first one should be relatively easy and then each one gets maybe a, a might bit harder, but none of these should be too bad. Uh, the important thing is knowing what the division algorithm is saying. It's basically saying when you start with a pair of integers, uh, A and B, uh, and uh, maybe we have some restrictions, you know, you don't want B to be zero, for example, uh, then we're supposed to be able to find uh, what I call a quotient remainder pair or a QR pair. Uh, this is going to be a quotient, and at least in the case where, say, A and B are uh, positive integers, then we're going to find an integer Q positive such that A is equal to Q times B plus another integer R. That's what we call the remainder. And uh, there's an extra condition here in addition to Q and R uh, being integers, or at least non-negative in this case, uh, R, well, yes, it should be at least zero, but it should also be less than B. So um, all we're asked to do is find such a pair, right? It actually turns out that for the integers, these pairs are going to be unique, um, but we don't need to prove that here. So in this first case, I have 131, and I essentially want to know how many times I can subtract 7 from 131 before I would get something negative. So uh, if A was 140, it'd be pretty easy, right? 7 would go into 140 20 times. 133 then would be 19, but 133 is still a little big. So this is going to be 18 copies of 7 that I can subtract. And that would be 126. Okay, so this is 126. Uh, that doesn't get me all the way to 131. That's going to leave me with 5 more. So this 18 would be my Q, and this 5 would be my R. You see, of course, R is non-negative, and it is less than 7. Okay, what about negative 131 and 7? Negative 131 and 7. Well, um, I might just think, well, look, I'll just do 18 by 7 again. Uh, and I say, well, then I'm going to get something positive. Uh, so what if I did negative 18 by 7? Well, then I'd end up at negative 126. Okay, so if I did negative 18 times 7, I'd be at negative 126. And I need to add something to make my way up to or down to negative 131. Now, in this case, the A doesn't satisfy this condition, right? But it actually turns out uh, that if we consider the case where A is just any integer and B is a non-zero integer, uh, uh, sorry, is a, B is a positive integer, uh, we can still use this exact same formulation. So I'm supposed to be getting some remainder, some positive number or zero, in this case definitely has to be positive, that when I add it to negative 126, I should get negative 131, which just isn't possible. So I'm going to have to go a little bit deeper, right? I'm going to have to do something like negative 19. Negative 19 by 7 will be negative 133. And now I can add to get up to negative uh, 131. I could add 2. So I'm going to go negative 19 by 7 plus 2. Okay, now this last one, the A has stayed negative 131, but the B is now negative 7. And that's going to change the form of this division algorithm. So if you just know that A and B are integers with B not equal to 0, then, well, I'm definitely going to be looking for a quotient remainder pair still. But now, of course, it's not you know, reasonable to expect uh, that Q is going to... Uh, oh, I guess up here I should have said, right, like in the second case, Q... So in this case, Q could be now just any integer, right? It has to, you have to allow it to be negative. Uh, so here, Q, the same thing, should be allowed to be negative. I still want R to be positive, though. Okay, so R is going to be, or at least non-negative. Uh, but I'm even going to have this extra condition, right? I still want it to look something like this. R is greater than or equal to 0. 
but now I really can't expect it to be less than B because, well, B could be a negative number. And so the right thing here is to use the absolute value of B. So we need our remainder in this case to be less than 7. All right, so we're going to write negative 131. And, well, let's see. If I take negative, uh, well, what are we going to need here? We're going to be multiplying by negative 7. Oh, so what if I just use 19 instead of negative 19? If I do that, I still get the exact same value, negative 133, and then I can add 2 and get up to negative 131. Oh, well, that's not too, too shabby at all. Okay, so uh, this is how we can, we can play the game. Sometimes our, our Q's and our R's are going to, yeah, well, at least our Q's could become negative, right? Like that could happen. We have to be careful, right, that we, um, uh, like in this special case here, right, like this middle one, that we, you know, maybe overshoot a little bit so that our R, we make sure it's positive. We definitely don't want our R's to be negative, okay? And then at the end, hey, good idea check that all the arithmetic you did actually works all right we've had a lot of people in the past who just write down something that seems reasonable to them and if they had just multiplied it out they go oh yeah this is nonsense all right we will see you in the next video uh, where we do a little more with the division algorithm but with a proof